Hey everyone, welcome back to Thriving with Richard Bass. Today's video tackles an essential topic that affects many young girls and their families, Autism Spectrum Disorder. Autism is a neurodevelopmental condition that impacts communication, social interaction, and behavior. However, diagnosing autism in girls can be particularly challenging due to unique presentation and differences from boys. So, in this video, we'll dive deeper into the symptoms, steps, and process of diagnosing autism in girls and explore how it may differ from boys. Before we delve into the specific symptoms and diagnosis process, let's gain a deeper understanding of autism spectrum disorder in general. Autism is not a single condition, but rather a spectrum, meaning it varies in severity and how it presents in individuals. No two people with autism are the same and this complexity can sometimes make it harder to recognize and diagnose. Let's now explore some of the typical symptoms of autism in girls. It's crucial to recognize that girls may exhibit these symptoms differently from boys, leading to potential misinterpretation or delayed diagnosis. Some common signs to look out for include Number 1. Difficulty with social interactions Girls with autism might struggle to form meaningful friendships or have difficulty understanding social cues, which can lead to isolation and feelings of being misunderstood. Number two, limited eye contact. Maintaining eye contact can be challenging for individuals with autism. In girls, this may manifest as fleeting glances or avoiding eye contact altogether, making it less noticeable to those around them. Number three, restricted interest. While both boys and girls with autism may have focused interests, girls' interests might be perceived as more socially acceptable or age-appropriate, making it easier to blend in with their peers. Number four, sensory sensitivities. Many individuals with autism have heightened sensitivity to sensory stimuli. In girls, this might lead to being bothered by certain sounds, textures, or lights, but they might not overly express their discomfort. Number five, communication challenges. Girls with autism may exhibit delayed speech development or repetitive language patterns, making it harder to identify their struggles as communication related. Number six, imaginative play with limited peers. Girls with autism might engage in imaginative play, but they might prefer solitary or parallel play rather than interactive play with others. And finally, number seven, social mimicry and masking. Girls with autism may try to mimic the behaviors of their peers, a phenomenon known as masking, as a coping mechanism to fit in socially. This can make their difficulties less apparent to others. We're moving on to section 3, recognizing the differences from boys. It's important to understand that autism can present differently in girls compared to boys. Boys may often exhibit more stereotypical symptoms such as repetitive behaviors or intense focus on specific subjects. On the other hand, girls might be better at camouflaging their challenges, making it harder for parents and educators to notice the signs early on. This ability to mimic social behaviors can lead to a delay in diagnosis or even result in misdiagnosis with other conditions. Moving on to section number four, the diagnosis process. If you suspect your daughter may have autism, seeking professional evaluation is crucial. The diagnosis process usually involves several important steps. Step number one, initial concerns. As a parent or caregiver, recognizing and acknowledging any developmental or behavioral concerns in your child is the first step toward seeking help. Step number two, a pediatrician visit. Discuss your concerns with your child's pediatrician, who can refer you to a specialist for further assessment. Pediatricians play a vital role in the early identification of developmental delays and can guide you through the next steps. Step number three, comprehensive assessment. Autism specialists, such as child psychologists or developmental pediatricians, will conduct a thorough evaluation. This assessment typically includes interviews with parents and teachers, direct observation of the child's behavior, and standardized assessments. Step number four is collaboration. The diagnosis process often involves gathering information from various sources, such as teachers, therapists, and other caregivers who interact with a child regularly. This comprehensive approach ensures a more accurate and holistic evaluation. And finally, step number five, 
differential diagnosis as autism shares some similarities with other developmental conditions, specialists will also consider other possibilities to ensure a precise diagnosis. And for our final section, we're going to seek support and early intervention. Once your daughter receives a diagnosis, remember that early intervention is of utmost importance. Seeking support from professionals and connecting with other families facing similar challenges can be incredibly beneficial. Early intervention services and tailored therapies can help improve communication skills, social interactions, and overall quality of life for children with autism. Understanding the symptoms and diagnosis process for autism in girls is crucial for early intervention and support. Each child with autism is unique, and their strengths and challenges will vary. If you suspect that your daughter might be on the autism spectrum, don't hesitate to seek professional help. Remember, the earlier the intervention, the better the chances of positive outcomes. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Thriving with Richard Bass for more helpful content. Feel free to share your questions or personal experiences in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.